to Hope for Today Fellowship. Are there any visitors, us, visitors with us this evening? Got a visitor here. Did you get a bag when you came in? No. Jeff, we need a gift bag, please. Is anyone else new and didn't get a gift bag? Okay, cool. Inside the gift bag you're going to get, sir, there's a card. If you fill out your name and email address, uh, Jeff will give you a free Tim Hortons gift card. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so nothing really new happening right this second. Wanted to thank everyone for uh, yesterday. It was at the oil change day. We were able to bless 17 women, so that's incredible. And God made the weather work and everything went smooth. Praise the Lord. That's great. You guys got to wake up. Um, we have a fun fair coming up, Georgina Family Fun Fair. We set up the field with inflatables and lots of cool stuff. Um, our community looks forward to it every year. So that is coming up soon. Next week we will have sign-up sheets and we need everyone to help, okay? So I don't care whether you want to help or not, you will be helping because we need you, okay? We need to love this community the best we can. Um, also, Kids Camp is coming up. If you haven't signed up to help for that or if you haven't signed your kids up like me, you need to do that ASAP. So there's a sign-up sheet at the back, and there are forms there if you have neighbors or kids or grandkids that need to come. Okay? Good? All right. A uh, reminder, Wednesday night is Bible study here at the Fellowship at 7 o'clock. Be here for that. It's a good turnout, good times. Learn lots. Study the Bible. Good? You guys are sleeping. I don't like this. It's all you do. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. <laughs> maybe it's because of the clouds and the raindrops falling down on our heads and makes us sleepy, but we gotta wake up. Okay? Yeah, how can we do that? Everybody spring to your feet. <laughs> Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for this night. Thank you for this time together, Lord. We're just expectant, Lord, in what you want to speak to us tonight um, in our hearts through the power of your Holy Spirit. So we invite you, come Holy Spirit, we need you. Speak to us and, and help us to be sensitive to, to you tonight, Lord. And help us as we sing your praises together to be in awe of you and to put away all distractions, Lord, and focus our attention on you, Jesus, and all you have done. We thank you and, you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Um, this song, Woman's Gonna Lead Us, is called Trading My Sorrows. And I love the words to this song because um, it's not saying that we are going to be um, always happy or um, healthy or not in pain, all of those things, Jesus said, in this world you'll have trouble, but take heart and have overcome the world, right? So we're gonna have sorrows, we're going to uh, be sick sometimes, there's gonna be pain, but this song says, I'm laying them down. So I'm putting those aside, I'm laying them down, and I'm gonna focus on what I have in the Lord, who I am in the Lord, and be joyful because I know Jesus. So, there you go. Take it away, Warren. There's also a song about healing, so if you've got a sore spot, put your hand on it and sing along with me. <laughs>
Trust without a crush, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed.
we have in you, Jesus. Give him your praise tonight. We praise you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. You are so good. You are faithful and true, God. Thank you, Lord, our creator, the beginning and the end, the truth. We give you praise tonight, Lord Jesus. We ask that you would come and speak to us through your word tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. This morning we were praying for Tristan, for uh, Jamie's son, Tristan, he's having seizures, he's not in good shape, he's still in the hospital, so we keep praying for him. And um, uh, we were talking about the, the oil change we did yesterday, so all, of, all the single women, single mothers, single mothers and, and widows, we, we changed their oil, we washed their cars, we did the interiors, and uh, it was free. And we had a great time doing it. It was fantastic. And what I didn't say this morning was that uh, Napa, this, this place right next door here, gave us all the oil filters for free. And, and, and uh, the um, part source gave us all Mobile One oil for free. But for you ladies that might not be aware, that's good oil. <laughs> and, 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 um, and we got wiper blades from bumper to bumper. They gave us all the wiper blades we needed, so we never had to pay for anything that way. That's cool, right? God is so good. I hope that doesn't make us look like we're not so good, you know, and just kind of being free. But but uh, it was it was great. And there was a lot of guys there to help, a lot of women helping. As, as we did the cars, the ladies that owned the cars would come downstairs and, and uh, June would greet them. Were you here, June? You weren't even here. <laughs> that reminds me, June. <laughs> <No. laughs> I'm so used to seeing you here doing everything, but obviously you were out getting your hair cut. <laughs> That's very nice. Okay. My daughter did it? My daughter-in-law. Oh, Alicia. <laughs> you know. well, as long as it's one of them, June, that's okay. That's what's important. Keep our family employed. <laughs> so all the ladies went downstairs and other ladies that we, our ladies greeted them and they gave them coffee and tea and donuts and stuff. And then they, they gave them the, the good news about Jesus. So that was, uh, that's fantastic. Wonderful. Now, we have a couple more big ministries coming up this summer. Kids Camp is coming up. And uh, I'm sure they always need volunteers June. So if you're not getting your hair cut, maybe. <laughs> so we have Kids Camp's coming up. Already, there's like 30, what did she say? Like 35 kids that have registered, and none of them are from here. Oh. That's awesome. Yeah, cool. I love that because that means we're doing outreach. There will be ones from here, but there are people who are lazy. They wait till the last minute and register their kids. But it's so cool. And then um, we have the Georgina Family Fun Fair coming up. And uh, that's always a big thing in town here. Last year we had over 500 families come. And uh, we got to meet them and share Jesus with them. And everything was free. I love that. Fantastic. I don't know if I told you this, but the guy that... Guy that owns the McDonald's in town here. He, he he's on the board at the Sharon Hope United Church, and and I went into, I just happened to be in McDonald's, and um, he said he said to me he says uh, what do you guys do to raise money? I never see on your sign you're never selling potted plants. You don't have the strawberry festival and the pancake this and the roast beef that. He says how do you guys make money? And I said. Well, our people give because they're, 
They have cheerful hearts and they give because of what Christ has done for them. We don't need to sell junk. And, and he was like, wow, that is such a concept. <laughs> oh. Anyway, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so proud to be part of the family of God. You know, we sang that song. This is important, too. We sang that song, I'm a child of God. And, and, and man, I, the, I've been to so many funerals that I didn't do. Someone else did. And obviously, they're never good enough if I didn't do them. And, but this, you always hear them saying, they say, well, we're all children of God. I hear it everywhere I go, and it, and it irks me because we're not all children of God. And, 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 and the Bible says, to those who believe, That's right. I give the right to become children of God. We're born children of the devil. We're, we're born children of, of wrath. And, and, and when we get to that place where we accept Jesus Christ, then we're adopted into the family of God. And it's a, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful truth. And we're adopted children. I like being adopted. My parents had no choice. <laughs> adopted parents, man, they didn't have to take us. God takes us in spite of who we are. Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your goodness to us. Thank you for allowing us. Those who choose to believe, those who are followers of Jesus Christ, to be called your children. What an amazing gift, but also what an amazing responsibility. As your children, we need to glorify you. We need to, we need to bring praise to your name. We need to behave like the children of the king. And so, Father, we, we ask you to Give us the courage and the boldness to behave in a manner that's fitting for children of the king. Thank you so much. And Father, we pray for our community. We pray for all those who don't know you, who aren't children of God, who are children of darkness. They, they don't even realize it. You know, they, they think they're good people, and I'm sure they are. They, they don't realize how lost they are. I, I know that because I was there too, and, and all of us were. And, and in one day, you open our eyes, and we see how lost we were. We were lost in our sin and our trespasses. We were dead in our sin and our trespasses. But you made us alive. We are alive in Christ Jesus. We thank you so much. What a wonderful thing. Father, we pray for Tristan as he lays in that hospital. Help him not to be scared, the poor little guy. Help his father not to be scared and his brother, Justin. Give them comfort, give them peace, and bring healing to Tristan, we pray. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lord, for this time together. We pray that your Holy Spirit would speak to us, the greatest teacher we could ever have, the Holy Spirit. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. As we look into the word of God, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, so we're, um, we're, on, um, we're looking at Genesis 24. We're not going to look at it right yet, right yet, but that's where we are. We were talking this morning, um, Abraham and Sarah have a son, Isaac. And Isaac needs a wife. Sarah died. This morning, Sarah died. How tragic. But, but she died, and, and Abraham bought a plot of land in the promised land, and he buried her in that cave. And, and so now Abraham's thinking about dying. He's getting up there in age. So he, he, um, he, he sends his servant uh, to get a wife for Isaac. Yeah, that's the way it should be. It'd be so much easier if I could just sit at home, <laughs> let my parents take care of it, you know. I, back when I was 19 and I got married, I didn't really care. You know, they could have sent me anybody. Except I picked a beautiful wife who's a wonderful, caring, and loving human being. She's downstairs, so I can really talk any way I want. But perhaps some of you could mention to her that I say she's a wonderful woman. <clears throat> so... So, so Isaac, Isaac, the servant goes to, to mom and dad's hometown because, because the line needs to continue. The bloodline needs to continue. These people need 
the, the wife for Isaac needs to be from the same tribe. And the reason is because out of that tribe is going to come the Messiah. It's going to come Jesus. Somewhere down the line, the seed of the woman. So, so it needs to follow that line. So it's very important that the wife comes from the tribe that Abraham and Sarah come from. And so the servant goes to their hometown and he lays out some criteria that's almost impossible. And he says to God, he says, listen, I need to find this woman. Show me who it is. I'm going to ask her for a drink of water. If she gives me a drink of water and she feeds my camels, I'm not going to ask her to do that. But if she says, I'll give you some water and I'll give your camels some drink. He says, that's the woman. So that's what he says to God. That's okay. It's okay to do that. It's good to do that. Make it very specific so that you know you're following the guidance of God. That's fantastic. So, so that's what's going on this morning. Look, look at this, Genesis 24, 14. This is, this is when he's giving God, he's praying to God. Let the young woman to whom I shall say, please let down your jar that I may drink. And who shall say, drink, and I will water your camels. Let her be the one. Let her be the one whom you have appointed for your servant Isaac. By this I shall know that you have shown steadfast love to my master. He, he, he puts out a, a, a remarkable, a remarkable detailed prayer. And it's, it's, he's looking for a remarkable woman. A, a woman. a woman who has a servant's heart. She, she's, she's willing to give water. She's also willing to... Who doesn't want a wife that would, would, would give drink to your camels? <laughs> he's not looking for a slave, but he's looking for somebody with the characteristics of a servant. And, and in case you haven't noticed from the beginning of the Bible, the people of God are called to be servants. All of us, not just the women. More so the women, but, but <laughs> no, mo mostly the men. Totally redeem myself there, didn't I? No. No. Okay. So. The servant is very specific in regards to the signs. He prays. Immediately this woman says, she says, I'll give you a drink and, and I'll feed your family. This is the woman. So that's where we left off this morning. Now we're reading in Genesis 24, verses 29 to 41. Rebecca had a brother whose name was Laban. Laban ran out toward the man to the spring. He ran out toward the servant at the well. As soon as he saw the ring and the bracelets on his sister's arms, that's the ring and the bracelets the servant gave to him, and heard the words of Rebekah, his sister, thus the man spoke to me. She told him the whole story. He went to the man, and behold, he was standing by the camels at the spring. People who had camels then were very wealthy people. Laban liked that. As you'll see later, Laban's a bit crooked. He said, come in, O blessed of the Lord. Why do you stand outside? Laban's inviting him into the house. For I have prepared the house and a place for your camels. So the man came to the house. He unharnessed the camels and he gave straw and fodder to the camels. And there was water to wash his feet and the feet of the men who were with him. So the servant and all the people that were with him in the camp. And, and Laban's taking care of all. Then the food was set before him to eat. But he said, I will not eat until I have said what I have to say, he said. But there's a lot of this. He said, he said. So, so I will not eat until I've, had, I've said what I need to say. This is the servant talking. And then Laban says, speak on. So he said, I'm Abraham's servant. The Lord has greatly blessed my master, and he has become great. He has given him flocks and herds and silver and gold, male servants, female servants, camels and donkeys. He, he's telling Laban, he's saying, listen, the guy's got a lot of cash. You want to listen to what I got to say? Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old. And to him, he has given all of this. All that stuff belongs to him. My master made me swear, saying, you shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land we dwell. <clears throat> she can't be a Canaanite. She needs to be from his home tribe. But you shall go to my father's house, to my clan, and you shall take a wife for my son. 
And I said to my master, perhaps the woman will not follow me. Can you imagine the servant shows up, he, he, he finds the woman because she drank and fed his camels. And then he says, hey, listen, I got this guy that wants to marry you. Come on, let's travel together. Kind of weird, right? <laughs> wow. Anyway, so he's a little bit afraid she might not follow. Ah, but he said to me, the Lord before whom I have walked will send his angel with you and prosper your way. The servant is not relying on his own genius here. He, he prays and tells God what, what needs to happen in order for him to know who the woman is. And, and he's prayed and he's asked God to, to, to lead and to guide him. And, and Abraham says, that's exactly what's going to happen. That's what's going to, the Lord before whom I have walked will send his angel with you and prosper your way. You shall take a wife for my son from my clan and from my father's house. I was saying this morning, like a lot of people don't know, but in Ontario, if you look at your mar marriage application, you're allowed to marry your cousin. It's not just Keswick. It's everywhere in Ontario. So this isn't too weird. Then you will be free from my oath when you come to my clan. And if they will not give her to you, you will be free from my oath. There it is. Rebecca runs off. She tells her family. She lets them know about this stranger. She's just met this guy. Her brother Laban, he's, he's all excited. He's a greedy person. And when he sees the gold, he sees the bracelets and the neck. He's all excited to see what else he can get out of them. And, and so um, Rebecca tries to tell the story. Laban rushes out. And he rushes to the well, meets the guy, and, uh, and he says, come on, let's go home. Before the servant will eat, he insists on telling Rebecca's family about his mission. And he will convince them to let their beautiful daughter get married to Isaac. Now, when he's, when, when, when uh, I mentioned this morning that, that when the servant is laying out this criterion to the Lord in prayer, he doesn't say, and she must be a beautiful woman. I think that's what most North Americans would have in the prayer there. Probably the first thing they would say. Um, but he doesn't. He's looking for a woman of character. He's looking for a woman who will follow the Lord. Not, not necessarily, uh, it, it's not about the external. And, and, and I think that's, that's really something that he, he didn't even mention out there. But then look what, he, look what he ends up with. She's a beautiful daughter. She's the most beautiful daughter in the family. And, and anyway, he did all right. Um, Genesis 24, 35 to 36. The Lord has greatly blessed my master. This is important. He says this to, to Laban. He says, the Lord has greatly blessed my master. My master is wealthy. He's been blessed so much in every way of his life. He says, so what do you think? And he turns to Laban. So what do you think? Are you going to bless my master the way the Lord has? Well, Here's, here's the servant's been telling me, this is all from God. Like, here's the sign. This is what happened. And the Lord has blessed Abraham so much. What are you going to do? Laban has to say, you know what? It's from the Lord. So therefore, you can have my daughter. You can, you can, but, but he has to do that. Like, that's, that's a cultural thing here. So, so he says, um, uh, and Sarah, my master's wife, this is 36, bore a son to my master when she was old and to him everything's been given so like if you want your sister to be well if you want to get a hold of any of our cash you better let her go when the servant is speaking with the family of rebecca he emphasizes how the servant and abraham were following the leading of god he emphasizes it he stresses god's providence in finding a wife for isaac he repeats the story exactly the way it went down. And, and, and he wants them to realize God has blessed this thing. This is from God. And, you know, in, in amongst church people, something bad that we do. This is, this is what we do. You, you want to do something. You want something to happen. You, you go to other people and you say, you know, God has told me that, that this, this is what we need to do. It's, not, it's an awful thing. It's an awful thing. I've seen it over and over and over again. I, 
young kids, God has told me I'm supposed to go to Bible college. Well, they want to go to Bible college because mom and dad won't pay for that. They won't pay for the other one. They want to go to Bible college because there's a girl there that they met, and they want to go and see her. That's why we call it bridal college. But, but, but the, the, there's, there's, some, there's some other motives. And I've, I've had people say, you know, God's told me I need to go to Bible college at, at, out Briarcrest. So i got to go out west. And, and, and the kid goes off, and two weeks later, he's back. I said, what happened? Well, it just wasn't for me. But, but God told you to go. Well, you know, then he told me to come back. <laughs> we use this. It's not good. It's not cool. But but here, here here's the servant telling that, and, and, and Laban knows the guy's not lying. Because Rebecca told the exact same story when she came back from the well. Everybody's telling the same story. So he knows it's from God. There's the providence of God involved here. After the servant has recounted the whole story to the family, because he goes home and tells everybody, that, then the story concludes with this big kicker, 24 verse 49. Now then, if you are going to show steadfast love, see the Lord showed steadfast love and faithfulness. And then, and then the servant says, now then, if you're going to show steadfast love and faithfulness, if you're going to be just like God, like you're supposed to be, and you're going to show that to my master, then tell me. If not, tell me that I may turn the right hand and to, or to the left. Tell me that she's going to marry Isaac. This, this amazing way that the servant phrases these things so Laban can't say anything but yes. Yes, you can have her. It's, it's really a loaded question, but it's beautiful the way he did it. In response, even Laban and Bethuel must admit that this is from God. It's not like it's not like he said, the first woman who shows up at the well, I'm going to ask her for a drink. If she gives me a drink, that's the woman. Well, that could, anybody could show up and be nice enough to give him, him a drink. But he says, I'm going to ask for a drink of water, and then she's going to turn around and offer also to drink, to give drink to my camels. He's not going to ask her. He's not going to mention his camels. He's just mentioned, I'm thirsty. Could I have a drink, please? Sure. Hey, can I water your camels? Those aren't cigarettes, by the way. I got, people are looking kind of, you know, <laughs> camels are those humpback. <laughs> you know what's you know what's really funny is when I was when I was coming in, my daughter was coming up from telling announcements, and she says to me, she says, Dad, it's a tough crowd tonight. <laughs> and so, oh, my goodness. <laughs> you guys. So, we're at um, uh, Genesis 24, 51. Behold, Rebecca is before you. Take her and go. This is what Laban says. Take her and go. Let her be the wife of your master's son as the Lord has spoken. He can't contradict what the Lord has said. And it's obviously from the Lord. So hearing this, the servant bows to the ground before the Lord. He worships God. He thanks God. Thank you for making this a successful mission. Thank you for guiding me and leading me. It's a wonderful thing. We have a, a chore to do. And we allow God to lead us and to guide us. Because it will be successful. We try to do it ourselves. I've tried to do a few things myself. Didn't work out well. But you follow the guidance of the Lord and you give him thanks. Amen. Yeah. Genesis 25, 50. But he said to them, do not delay me. So so, so Rebecca's brothers and, and, and sisters, they're all talking about it, mom and dad. And they're all talking. And, and Laban says, take her and go. Well, then, then uh, he says, first we're going to have a feast. So they all hang out at the house. They have a big feast because it's the Italian thing to do. And oh, they're not Italian, are they, Dan? Okay. Dan's trying to convince me that Jesus is Italian because he lived in the Roman Empire. Therefore, he was Italian. And I'm happy to say, in case you didn't know, this is Dan's last night here. He's, <laughs> He's on his way to Alberta. So, um, so... <laughs> They're feasting. They're feasting, and, and then the, and then they talk. They talk the servant into staying overnight, and in the morning he's going to leave with Rebecca. In the morning they go. Why don't you just wait ten more days? 
Why don't you just wait 10 more days? The servant says, well, what for? You gave it to me, I'm leaving. We're taking off. And, no, no, just wait 10 more days. And, and, and the family agreed, let's let Rebecca decide. So they call her in the room. Rebecca says, no, I'm ready to go. I'm ready. She's going to take that chance. She's going to go with the servant and meet this guy she's never met. And she's going to marry him. That's pretty brave. <laughs> so um, Rebecca is called in to decide the issue. She decides the issue. She responds in verse 58. And then they called Rebecca and said to her, will you go with this man? And she said, I will go. Very determined. Rebecca's relatives honor her decision, send her on her way with a blessing. And in spite of this, there remains a final question. Will Isaac accept her? Well, she's willing to accept Isaac, but is Isaac willing to accept her? That's kind of an interesting thing. Hmm. Y'all want to know how that ends? <laughs> That's right here in uh, verse 63 to 66. Isaac went out to meditate in the field toward evening. And he lifted up his eyes and he saw, and behold, there were camels coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes. And when she saw Isaac, she dismounted from the camel. And she said to the servant, who is that man walking in the field? Never mind who my husband is. Who's that guy? <laughs> The servant said, it's my master. And she took her veil and she covered herself. When, when these, these, the, the veil is on the woman before, the, before they get married, and, and like he doesn't see her before they get married. That's the, the cultural thing here. I think that's where we get our veils from. We don't use veils anymore, do we? Yeah. I think because they keep catching fire. They hold candles around. So. <laughs> uh, so, so um, she took her veil and she covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. He told him exactly how it went down. And, and Isaac was pretty excited about it. In verse 67, it says, Then Isaac brought her into the tent of Sarah, his mother. And he took Rebekah. And she became his wife. And he loved her. So Isaac was comforted from his mother. His mother had just died this morning when we were reading. <laughs> And, and, and so he's recovering from his mother's death. And here, so Israel doesn't have a mother. Sarah was the patriarch of Israel. And then she dies. Rebecca is now occupying mom's tent. And so now the seat, the people, the Jews reading this, they must have been so excited because so, so many times Israel could have been cut off, could have been the end of it. And, and Messiah wouldn't have come. Because they're watching the signs. They're making sure that all these things happen the way God said it would. And so here's Rebecca. She's from the proper tribe. She's replacing Sarah. And uh, everybody's happy. Yay. Sarah's tent is occupied again. It, it, by the way, I don't know. I don't know how smart all you people are. Um, Isaac brought her into the tent. Uh, of Sarah, his mother, and took Rebecca. Uh, that's, that's, you, this is interesting. And, and, and you know what, I've never shared this, and it's, it's, always, it's probably a difficult thing to share, but my wife's not here, so I'm going to try it. But all the covenants that God makes with people, all the covenants that God makes with his people have to do with blood. I don't know if you know that. So, so the covenant that he made with Abraham was circumcision. There was blood involved. And in marriage, there's, there's supposed to be blood involved. Now, our, our culture um, has ruined a lot of that. But if, if a woman stays virgin until she's married, so this is, if I was Jewish, this is how it goes. We go into the tent. We... we, we yeah. Yeah. Consummate. Yeah. That's a good word. Uh, I started sweating. I didn't know what to do. Um, so we consummate our marriage, and then I hang the bed sheet out the window so that everybody can see the blood on there, so that they know that, that my wife was a virgin. Because if she wasn't, according to the law, 
she would have been killed. And I'll tell you what happens. Sometimes, sometimes um, uh, a woman might not bleed the first time because, because of whatever situation, uh, medical, whatever. So, so what they used to do, the parents would take a dead chicken and put it under the bed. And then when the bride and groom went into the room and they, and they consummated, if there was no blood, they would put the blood of the chicken on the sheet and put it out the window so everybody would sit and so they wouldn't kill this guy's wife. I know. I, I don't say this to be rude or gross or anything. I'm, I'm, I'm saying it because all the covenants that God makes is in blood. The new covenant that he made with his people was made in blood. And it's very important to remember that, that, that God chose blood as a symbol of covenant. And, and, uh, and so that's what, that's, that's why they did, it's not like, it's not like they didn't have to get that. This was their marriage. This is what was, this is a wedding. That's how they did it. That's the culture. That's how it worked. So, um, I, I, I must have told you that because somebody here needed to know that. I didn't need to know that, but somebody did. So if God had not guided the servant to Rebekah, then there would have been no Israel. And if Rebekah had refused to go, there would have been no Israel. But God gently worked through human careful consideration and servants convincing arguments to bring about his special people, Israel, the holy nation. This is... This story, when I first started reading this chapter, I thought, oh, what are you going to say out of that chapter? But it's very important. It's a very important chapter in the history of Israel. God is concerned about the continuation of the seed of the woman. And centuries later, the Lord called on another young woman to advance the cause of the seed of the woman. The messenger Gabriel was sent by God to the town of Galilee and Nazareth to a virgin. The virgin's name was Mary, and the messenger said to her, You will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. It's all about the seed of the woman. And, and this, is, this, is, this is the prophecy right from the very beginning of the Bible, from Genesis chapter 3. And, 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 and the seed of the woman... Your, your offspring, he's talking to the serpent, to the devil, your offspring will, will, be, in, 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 will be against the, the, the offspring of the woman. And, and, and you shall bruise his heel and he shall crush your head. That's, that's the prophecy of Jesus Christ, the seed of the woman from the very beginning of the Bible all the way through the Bible. And Jesus has victory on the cross and he crushes the head of the devil crazy? It's really a great story. I'm sorry if I put you to sleep. No? You're not that bad of a crowd, Lisa. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I know that when I read these things, I get excited and I try to explain what, what it is you've shown me, but my words aren't good words. I, sometimes I lose myself in thought. I don't know what I'm saying. But Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit speaks to everybody here. They got to hear the word of God. They got to see those scriptures. And your Holy Spirit brings it to their mind and, and, and interprets it for them. Father, thank you so much that Israel happened. We're so glad that the people of Israel came out through all of the all of those stories every time that, that Satan tried to destroy the nation of Israel. And yet and yet they made it through. And and now today we who are called followers of Jesus have been grafted in to that seed. We've been grafted into that vine. And we too are Israel. We're not replacing anybody. We're joining in. And the promises of God to Israel become our promises. Not promises of land, not promises of wealth, but promises of inheritance. 
As children of God, we inherit what belongs to God. Eternal life. Freedom. Oh. You give us so many things, Lord. You give us so many things. Purpose. Honor. Respect. And we don't deserve any of it. It's called grace. Getting what we don't deserve. And what we do deserve is eternal torment. We deserve that. But in your great mercy, you don't give that to us. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Lord. Thank you. Oh, you love us so much. It's incredible. Thank you for the word of God. In a world where there's no truth, <laughs> who knows? Everybody's lying. Everybody's deceiving. We have the word of God, the truth. We have Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other way to the Father except through me. Thank you for that truth. And thank you that the truth sets us free. You're such a good God. We worship you and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good. Let's stand and we'll go tonight remembering all that Jesus has done for us. We need to remember every day, don't we? We'll praise the name. Mm -hmm.